game of basketball a lot more than what people give him credit. And that has helped him be able to make those passes and be able to play the game the right way. He's not just going out there to try and score 40. He's trying to go out there and win. So if he gets doubled, he knows that it's his job to pass the ball out and we make the play. If he's not getting doubled, he knows that it's his job to score the ball. And so, yes, it is a little refreshing, but I would say it's refreshing because he's on our team and not that we have to go against him. Our players that surround him, we have a great supporting cast. We need him, but he needs us. It's a team effort. He's not going to go win the game just if he scores 30 points. We need him to do multiple things, just like we need everybody on the team to do multiple things to continue doing their job for the full 40 minutes. Go ahead. Do you feel like just for people watching, the sight of him is revolutionary now? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. I would say absolutely to that. There's not many times you see a 7 4 player that can move like he does. He's agile, he plays 40 minutes a game doesn't get tired and that's definitely refreshing that's definitely revolutionary uh seven four three hundred pounds imagine yourself out there running up and down 40 minutes and he's seven four three hundred pounds and he's doing it with ease so yes it is refreshing to have a player like that mason did, matt has harped on the, the number of turnovers and what it means when you get a certain amount mm -hmm. at what point when he's feeding you these numbers, are you buying into it? Is that something that came at the very beginning, or was there a process where, oh, okay, this is this is what we need to do to yeah, avoid the these quickest mistakes? answer. Well, the best answer I can give you for that <laughs> is anything he says, we buy into it. If you don't buy into it, you're not going to play, and he's going to know that you're not buy into it because we have 17 players that are buy into it. Right. And so you're the outlier if you don't buy into it. You're not in the majority if you're trying to do your own thing or if you're trying to make something up on your own. You right. know what I mean? Everybody has bought in, and so that's the collective. That's what you do. Um, I think that the buy-in wins us games. The buy-in keeps us connected, and that's what we need. That's what any team needs. And the teams that aren't bought into the same goal, the same message, are the teams that aren't here. And I think that that is what has gotten us here is because we have stayed connected, uh, we've stayed bought in through the tough times. The tough times didn't separate us. It was times where, for example, like Brady yesterday, he had his head down a little bit. We came together. We communicated to him, we need you. We need your confidence. We need your mentality to win this game. And he fixed it a little bit. He didn't have the best game of his career, but that's okay. That's why we preach next man up. Okay, over here on the side. Coach Payton, you were talking about this week. Why do why do the guys that you have on the team sort of respect the you know the kind of mm -hmm. no BS approach you mm -hmm. have? Would you respect your boss if he told you that you needed to be somewhere one day and then it changed, or he, you were promised something and then it changed? You know, it's just life. Honestly, I think it's it's bigger than basketball. Just, I would rather work for somebody that's honest to me, that's telling me I'm doing a bad job, I need to pick it up. Or on the other hand, I'm doing a good job, keep doing what you're doing. That's what we all wanted. And I think he knows that. He was a player. It's not like he just loves basketball and then picked it up one day and was like, hey, I'm going to start coaching. And then he got successful. He's been playing sports his entire life. He's played under great coaches. Coach Katie gave him a foundation to work from. And Coach Paint has made that foundation his own. And so I think Coach Katie was honest with his players, but he didn't give them, I don't want to talk bad on Coach Katie, but he didn't give them the true honesty. He told them how Coach Katie wanted to be told. Coach Paint understands that everybody needs to be talked to differently. And so he literally analyzes us through personal assessments and gets his information on how we want to be treated and who we are as a person. You know, it's, again, it's bigger than basketball. So again, if in the real world, if I'm choosing a boss, I want to work for somebody that's brutally honest and that can give me that brutal honest in tough times. And that's why we all respect pain. That's why everybody before us, everybody after us will respect pain because of who he is. He's a great guy. He's always going to be honest and you know what you're getting from him. Mason, when you reflect on your journey, not just this year, but when you came to Purdue, recovering from the knee injury, 
having to redshirt and work your way back. And you, you know, you, you said last night that uh, you thought this team could win a national championship the last two years. But at what point did you envision sitting in this position today and on the cuffs of what's going to happen on Monday night? Mm-hmm. Um, my journey has been a lot, you know, but I wouldn't ask for anything different. Any, every, anything and everything that's happened to me, it's been life lessons to be able to learn from it and grow from it. I was told, you know, there's been multiple times I've been told um, in that point of adversity, it's how you're going to react from it. You know, Coach B always tells us when we take a loss, how do championship boxers get up off of the canvas? They don't cry. They don't whine about it. They get right back to work. They get right back in the gym and understand that they're the best. They keep that belief in themselves. And that's what we've done. Whether it's our intrinsic telling ourselves or me telling Brandon, me telling Zach, Zach telling me. Um, that's the best thing about our journey is we've grown together. I've grown myself. We've all learned through things. And again, it's bigger than basketball. We're building relationships. We're building lifelong brothers. Um, and then to the point about me sitting here, I've been envisioning it since I played in the Little League World Series. You know, I always want to compete at the highest level, no matter what that is, whether we're playing cards, video games, basketball, baseball, it doesn't matter. And that's how all the 17 guys are in the room, all the coaches are, we're ultra competitive. And we had the vision of getting here, but we didn't talk about it enough last year. And I think that's the biggest difference between this year and last year. We have, I don't want to ever say we talked about it too much, but the conversations have been held, whether that's FDU, whether that's um, something small we need to talk about, whether that's the national championship, final four, uh, whatever it is, we're having those conversations on a daily basis to keep ourselves on track, on mind, on focus, on the same page. And again, that's what's gotten us here. Yes, we go out and we perform, but the preparation before the performance is more important. Okay.